So those are a few things I've learned about the Insurgent through using the thing for a very long time in GTA Online. This is the part of the video where I say this video is going to be the first and last in the series, at least by me. What I have in mind for this is to do a sort of collaboration with anyone and everyone who makes videos for the GTA community. Well Pyram, turns out a grand total of two other people went ahead and bothered making one of these. I sure as hell might go ahead and do the third community one, but if that's the case, I'm gonna go do it on something worthwhile like the Volatile or the B11. I only have two things I could afford in my hangar after I beat up a kid for his bar mitzvah money. Society isn't ready to see the true power of the Volatile. Assuming... Yep. Caleb, my net worth right now is that $5 extra you gave me on PayPal. That's my... I'm not <laughs> pitching in anything. <laughs> Look at the kill Wait, feed. Wait, what happened? Look at the kill feed. Look at the kill feed. Look yeah, the kill I see feed. that. What happened and how? And now I'm gone. <laughs> what? What did you do? <laughs> Yo, you're gonna make him mad. Did you ram him with a volatile or something? Maybe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> how? B11, it is. The B-11, otherwise known as the Warhog, is a plane added in the After Hours DLC. It is a mix between the Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt to Warhog and the Northrop YA-9's tail according to the GTA Wiki. Heading over to the customization options, you've got armor options, bombs, but we'll get to those in a little bit, countermeasures, engine upgrades, handling upgrades, and a very limited amount of livery options and typical respray options. Armor has no cosmetic or handling effects, so there's no con for going 100%. Bombs are something that's always misunderstood. To kill players, use the explosive bombs, but for the B-11 only use the explosive bombs unless you are confident in landing direct impacts. Then use incendiary bombs, or if you want a free trip to the Netherlands, feel free to use gas. No promises that the wind won't blow back in your direction and eradicate your men. Oh, and cluster bombs don't exist. For countermeasures, shaft if you're trying, flares if you're not, and smoke if you want to look like a dumbass. For engine tune, you should pick tune level 4. There's no reason not to. Handling for the B11 is something more of a personal preference, as the types of handling types you purchase are a gradual increase for most smooth to least smooth. Stock handling is the most smooth of all the handling mechanics, and when flying it, your B11 will feel like a fat bumblebee. Buzz, 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 shit, shit, shit. <laughs> That's not too bad to practice bombing. We'll get to that in a little bit. Personally, I like the race handling. It's switchy compared to stock and will help with quick adjustments. Maybe dodging some unwanted projectiles thrown your way. If you don't run the shark livery, uninstall the game, throw yourself in the trash and go lick an Amtrak rail because you are a disappointment. Just like I am to mom. First thing to note when taking this glorious flying cross to the sky is that this thing is slow. It's fat, but goddamn if there ain't some more American than this besides Paw Shop. Hi there, this is Paw Shop. It's, you know, the great Paw. I don't know if you read the sign outside, but it says no lip tards and no nigg. Then you might as well fly this into a tower like you've been doing with all the other planes in this game. The plane, however, increases its top speed just above 900 feet, according to the wiki, or just above the top of the Maze Bank Tower. Hitting this altitude makes you the glorious apex predator you always thought you were when reliving moments in your head about middle school fights. With the increased top speed, you are able to outturn high tracking missiles of all kinds, including a Presser Mark II missiles. That is something that's nearly impossible to do when below maze bank altitude. Quick side note, the B-11 is able to dodge standard homing missiles at all altitudes, but for some reason, a Presser Mark I missiles have better than standard missiles, but not as good as high tracking. However, it does outturn the B-11 when below low altitudes, thus the classic witch broom is still a little relevant. 
<laughs> no, it's not. The 900 foot altitude speed boost is enough to survive the Luxo missiles, Mark II missiles, Scramjet missiles, but not Chernobog missiles. You can't survive a well placed Chernobog unless you do what we like to call the swag strat. The swag strat is when you fly straight and hold down L1 or R1 or left and right bumper. Your plane will start pitching to the side you choose and missiles of all kinds will chase after you and blow up far away behind you. However, be mindful that you still have to get some altitude to be able to do this. Refer to the maze bank altitude for that. Heading over to the plane's defenses, the plane takes 5 explosive sniper rifle rounds to blow up. It also takes 6 homing rockets to blow up and 2 RPGs or sticky bombs to blow up. It also takes 1 flat cannon shot from the AA. Two missiles from the AA trailer SAM configuration, two shots from the MOC rear and front turrets, one shot from the Kinjali railgun, or two shots from the Avenger cannons. Before I get to the biggest weakness about this plane, I just have to say that this plane is quite literally a flying tank. You are bound to collide with walls on this thing, and you will most likely come out unscathed and be accused of having it god moded, unless you have, in that case, Kill yourself. However, when using the B-11, you have to be mindful that all explosive methods, regardless of how weak or strong it is, you are very likely to just be hit in the back and disable most, if not all, control systems. But to be fair, if something hits you on the back, it is rare that more than one system will be destroyed as long as you are maneuvering. Even plainly holding a circle might help in keeping your plane in one piece, albeit still damaging it. The plane is armed with 7 rocket barrage missile pods with the same explosive yield as the homing launcher. There is a reload time of 4 seconds per volley that will only start when the 7th rocket leaves the pod. I personally use the rocket barrage only for ground vehicles, especially against armored vehicles, except for the RCV. Nothing can counter the RCV. Some of my friends use the barrage to ground strike players on foot, but I personally have a more clean way of dealing with on foot targets. The missile volley has an intersect range of 1500 feet or approximately 457 meters or the length of the smallest runway in Zancudo airfield. Moving on to the homing missiles and the front cannon, the homing missiles are higher tracking missiles than standard like I mentioned earlier with the oppressor mark 1, but they aren't high tracking like the ones on the loser mobile. However, the B-11 is the first aircraft stored in the hangar with limited homing missiles as you can only fire 30 homing missiles. This does not affect the barrage rockets as they are unlimited. The cannon on the front is another thing people get wrong about this plane. The cannon is not a death beam like the Hydra or laser. The cannon is actually incendiary, just like the Rogue and the explosive cannon on the Mark II oppressor. Yeah, it is a weak cannon, but guess what? It's fair. It's not supposed to be used against ground targets, but like ground vehicles and aircraft. But yeah, it's not realistic. I didn't know GTA was a simulator. If it were, Mr. XX Tryhard on Ops would kneel over from heart failure in real life after e wing because someone looked at his Fruit Loops wrong. The reason I put these two in one section of the video is because they are amazing when used together. A little better than other planes as a matter of fact. The incendiary cannons plus the standard plus homing missiles means dogfighting on a B-11 is more of a fire and forget situation. But in regards to the cannon, you are welcome to try ground striking tryhards clever enough to put a sticky bomb on their feet. Or maybe you just happen to get that lucky direct impact with the cannon. Who knows? Finally, we get to the bombs. My specialty. Bombing on the B-11 is nothing special. The job can be done with some derpy looking series or a tiny starling. But with the B-11 you have the added effect of terrifying some lowly tryhard. I've noticed that when I teach friends how I bomb, their biggest issue is locating the target. I still struggle with this to this day, but there are tips I can give to make payload delivery as easy as Kanye West versus a disabled basketball team. If you're on console, render distance is absolute garbage. So by flying away, everything you are looking at will pixelate except for players or vehicles players are in. 
an even easier method to spotting targets is if they voluntarily tell you where they are in the form of shooting rockets or a minigun at you. You simply look for the source and strike. You could bait them into doing so by simply flying around them. Just be careful about explosive snipers. Once you have spotted your target, you turn your plane towards them and make your micro adjustments. This is the part you are most vulnerable, so make this quick. Drop your bomb at a 30 to 45 degree angle. Don't be afraid to get up close and personal with your target, because you can tank a lot of what they throw at you. Remember to only drop one bomb at a time. Carpet bombing has a weird delay and the start of the run and its spread is quite shit. Once you have mastered the art of position bombing, or JDAMs as we like to call it, you will instantly see the true potential of the B-11 strike force. That is because the B in B-11 literally means bomber. I missed? Or no, I think I hit him. He's smoking, bro. Yeah, he's smoking. Yo, bring that ass here, boy. Oh, this dude's about to fucking... Oh, I'm dead. Yo, I looked up, and I seen that shit. Yeah, nah. That's all I had to say about the B11. I just wanted to thank Pyrome Gaming for starting this series, and to Astro Soup and the Nooks book for contributing to the series with their own videos, with much better structuring that comparing it to mine would be like comparing apples to retards. Thank you for watching this video. Good luck, and happy hunting.